The title race was always going to be an uphill battle when Barca lost to Real Madrid in El Clasico in March, but today's 2-2 draw with Celta de Vigo may have sealed the title race. Games with Celta have been open affairs of late. A 4-1 win for Barca in November, both teams getting a 2-0 win over the other last season, and 5-0 for Barca back in 2018. Funny enough, the 2-2 in December of 2017 happened to be my honeymoon. So that 2-2 was filled with great memories, but this one, not so much. We talk about the promise of youth with Ricky Puj and Ansu Fati. But first, I want to welcome you to this Barcelona podcast YouTube exclusive, breaking down Barca's 2-2 draw with Celta de Vigo. The match was set up for a hero. Iago Aspas, Celta's talismanic forward, has scored 37.9% of the Galician's goals, while Messi came in sitting on 699 career goals, having scored 30% of Barca's this season. Let's put a pin in that and keep that in mind for later. You can expect that for the rest of this season, teams are going to defend the Blagrana in a 5-3-2 formation. The 5 means that Barca need to prove that they can play direct and find ways to stretch that back line to free space for Messi. The 2 up top means that every team knows that Barca are susceptible to the counterattack. The benefit of starting Ricky Puj against the 5-3-2 was on display early. The way to attack a 5-man back line is to force them to give the ball away, as Puj did in the second minute, which sent Ansu Fadi off to the races. Though no foul was called on the contact in the box, one of two times this happened with the 17-year-old. As was the case in the previous four matches, Barca were terrific prior to the first cooling break. They had completed 75 passes before Celta had completed 10. And these weren't just horizontal or back passes. They were making progress and putting Celta on the back foot. They were winning set pieces, and after PK hit the crossbar, you felt like it was only a matter of time. Good to see PK looking healthy too, after that injury scare late against Athletic Club. In the first half, the counters came for Celta because there was way too much space between the midfield and the back line. Barca has won one game out of eight without Sergio Busquets this season, and tactically, this is a reason why. While Rakitic came in for Busquets as a defensive midfielder, Rakitic had a pretty bright day. He was in the right positions and getting involved with diagonal balls and recycling possession in a productive way. The issue is on Setien, I think. On set pieces and in sequences of prolonged buildup, Rakitic comes higher than Busquets normally would to make runs into the box. This left Puj as the outlet outside of the box, but unlike Busquets, who also has longer legs to snuff out loose balls, Puj's first thought is to continue getting involved in the attack, not stopping a counterattack. To PK's credit, for the first 80 minutes at least, he played these counters really well by not going straight at the attackers, but instead stalling them long enough for Barca's numbers to retreat. Ter Stegen deserves tons of plaudits for really being the one to stop the counters. He let in two goals, but it should have been five. His own giveaway led to two saves on Iago Aspas, a save on Mendez in the 24th minute, and the 80th and 95th minute saves on Nolito that the former Barcelona B winger should have scored. We say thank goodness for Messi all the time, but thank goodness for Ter Stegen. The German goalkeeper got beat twice today, so I guess we can talk about the goals now. First, we'll speak about Barca's first, coming off the set piece and magical left foot of Messi. For some reason, Celta went with a three-man wall and men on the post, but no one directly on Luis Suarez. If you're going to leave certain guys open, I don't know why it would be Suarez. Messi notices and delivers the ball that Suarez leaves no doubt on the header. On the other side, Celta get there first because Rakitic misplays a ball that he excelled with for so much of the match. Puj attempted to cut down the space, but he didn't get there in time and didn't want to commit the foul by lunging in too quickly, so Aspas had the time to find a Kuzlu on the wing, and it was an easy tap-in for Smolov. Umtiti was caught out on the pass from Aspas, just one in many times that the Frenchman didn't deliver on the day, and Rakitic was caught behind the play. Later on in the second, Luis Suarez got his brace, and what a goal this was. Rakitic starts to move to Suarez, who is taken down, but seeing the ball is still available, pops back up instead of complaining. Semedo wins the ball back and finds Messi, who lays it off to Suarez. That said, there was still so much more for Suarez to do. As he's shielding Araujo, he lets the ball roll across his body and puts his boot through it at the right time and the right angle to beat Blanco in the corner. Tremendous goal from El Pisolero. Unfortunately for Barca, the fourth goal will be the one that everybody talks about. After PK fouls Rafinha right outside the box, Ter Stegen sets up a five-man wall with Griezmann on the outside of the wall. When Aspa strikes the ball, Griezmann jumps sideways, making himself more narrow instead of wider, and the ball goes around him. What was puzzling for me is that it was a five-man wall and not a four-man wall with Griezmann or Mtiti on the post. Either way, Celta's hero came through for the Galician side once again. What makes this result worse, one that breaks a five-game streak of clean sheets, is that Barca's next two matches are against Atletico Madrid and Villarreal. Atletico hasn't been great either, but playing Marcos Llorente farther forward has worked wonders for Diego Simeone, and he'll be willing to make this one a slobber knocker, with plenty of fouls that remind Barca they have a bunch of 30-year-olds who play every three days. After that is Villarreal, who is the hottest team in the Liga since the restart. 
Tough times may be ahead, but I hope you can come back here for match reviews and more, and give a listen to the podcast with Frances and I as we get into the big ideas, including the deal involving Artur and Mirlan Pjanic. Find that down in the description below. And be sure to like, subscribe to this channel, and hit that bell for more notifications. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca!